It was a very common thing for slave children to be eaten. You guys, be safe. this national treasure here in our backyard. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm doing a kayaking series. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, good. I'm cataloging the locations that I'm gonna do here in Jacksonville. We're here at the Fort George Island. Uh, it's part of the Timaquan uh, Preserve Trail. It is uh, thousands of acres of wetlands, marsh, estuaries, rivers, and ocean. Uh, just a few miles from put in that they have here. Uh, looks like it's a little muddy during low tide and the currents can be quite strong here so make sure you're a strong paddler if you plan on going against the tide. Otherwise you can have a fabulous day putting in, riding the tide out to the beach, hang out on the sandbars during low tide and wait for the high tide to come back in and you can come back and uh, explore a little bit more about Fort George Island. They have a beautiful welcome center. You can go and learn more about the history that goes back thousands of years with the Timucuan Indians being first occupied by the French, uh, taken over and occupied by the Spanish, and then of course the English, and now it's currently occupied by the Americans, but everybody seems to be fine with that. I'm fine with it as well, because it's a wonderful park. It doesn't cost anything to come in. Behind me, you'll see what represents a quarter acre of cotton. This is what the slaves had to come out and uh, farm for the plantation owners in the morning. And then in the afternoons, they would return to their quarters and to their fields so they could grow their own food. Well, at least they had somewhere to live. Uh, their children did have to just sit on the ground while they were in the fields and many of them uh, died of mosquito-borne illnesses as well as eaten by predators. It was a very common thing for slave children to be eaten by alligators, bears, coyotes. Uh, there wasn't really any protection for them while the parents were out working the cotton fields. <laughs> Sorry guys, I really am. There she is. Are you the leader of the guys? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This yeah. is our this better is photogenic one. <laughs> cool. What are your names? Uh, Sally. George. Charlie. Carl. Carl. And you guys are from? Bernardina, Bernardina Beach. Bernardina. Did you ride down A1A? Yes, yep. we did. Yeah. Excellent. Well, how far do you have back to Fernandina? 17 miles. That's, that's, that's a good ride. Yeah. yeah, it's about 40 miles total. 40 miles. Let's see, 17 we miles. Sunday morning. That would probably take me about four to five hours in a kayak. Yeah. Probably takes you guys, what, hour and a half, two hours? About two. Yeah. yeah. Two. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, guys. Be safe. It was some old, mean white guy. The socialites and visitors would come to the dinner club house where the kayak launch is at. The slaves were responsible for creating the entire catering and party service. Those slaves who were lucky enough not to have to work in the fields, they were either working in the kitchen or serving in the house. While they ate oysters safely back then, we do not recommend consuming oysters from the St. John's River due to staggering levels of pollution and toxins. The river has been getting better in times past. The oysters in the St. John's River really do not recommend consuming them at this time, even during cold winter months. If you're really interested in learning more about Fort George Island, I've got the pictures of the tour plaques out there, and I'll do my best to try to find you a link to the audio tour. If I can't do that, you're just gonna have to come down here to Jacksonville, Florida, and visit Fort George Island for yourself. Come out and enjoy uh, Fort George Island. It's just a uh, 10 minute drive from downtown Jacksonville. So there's no excuses not to come out and enjoy this national treasure.
treasure here in our back.